Okay, let's talk about uh, a couple of theorems in this screencast. Let's talk about the linear pair theorem. Uh, let's talk about what we mean by a linear pair. Uh, we mean that these are two angles whose non-common rays form a line. That's what we mean by a linear pair. Uh, it's a pair, it's two angles, and their non-common rays form a line. So let's look at the scenario. You have that angles B, A, D, and D, A, C form a linear pair. And we'll, we'll just group all this together because we're going to need it a couple of times. Uh, then we get the familiar result that you get from high school, that the sum of those two angle measures is 180. So let's just make this explicit. Let's say that the measure of angle BAD is some number alpha, and the measure of angle DAC is some number beta. Uh, so we claim that alpha, the claim is that alpha plus beta is 180. Uh, and so what we're going to do is a time-honored technique where we use trichotomy and we chase some cases down we figure what happens if those measures add up to some number that's less than 180, what goes wrong, and then what happens if those numbers add up to something more than 180, what goes wrong. So he, here's the idea. Uh, in this particular case, you have, uh, so this is alpha and this is beta, but if if alpha plus beta is less than 180, so alpha plus beta is a real number, it's between 0 and 180, and so in this half plane, in the D side of BC, I can draw a ray so that this angle has a measure alpha plus beta. But by betweenness, that means that if this angle has measure alpha, then this angle has measure beta. But this angle has measure beta, which means that this angle has measure zero, and that's where the contradiction is. Because it's if this angle has a measure of zero, then this red ray is the same as this ray AC. So the a plus, alpha plus beta less than 180 doesn't work. Similarly, if this angle's alpha and this angle's beta, then we have to be able to draw a ray. I suppose I can draw the ray. We have to be able to draw a ray so that this is alpha plus beta minus 180. And if that's the case, then we have all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. We draw this by assumption. If alpha plus beta is greater than 180, then alpha plus beta minus 180 is a positive number. And if that's a positive number, then I can draw a ray such that this angle measure is alpha plus beta minus 180. Well, then what happens? Then we get alpha plus beta minus 180 and an alpha and a beta, and that's got to equal 180. And it can't. So this goes badly. And if this goes badly and this goes badly, it's got to be that alpha plus beta is 180. So linear pair holds. 
Um, this theorem also holds a point D is in the interior of angle BAC if and only if ray AD intersect the interior of the segment BC. So uh, this, the, let's play it both ways. Let's go this way first. Uh, we assume that a point D is in the interior of angle BAC, which means there has to be an angle BAC, and there has to be a point D in the interior of angle BAC. So we want segment BC and we want ray AD to intersect the interior of the segment. Why does that happen? That's crossbar. Crossbar theorem applied to triangle BAC tells me that ray AD has to intersect segment BC. Well, go the other way. Let's pretend that ray AD intersects the interior of segment BC. Does point D have to be in the interior of ray of angle BAC? So let the intersection point be E. So ray AE has to be between ray AB and ray AC because E is on segment BC. So the only way that that works is if ray AE is between ray AB and ray AC, and ray AE is ray AD, and so we're done that way too. Okay? A couple of nice theorems involving angles, uh, things you should be aware of.